What's going on guys? Today we're going to go over an indoor pool room design. So first we're going to look at a concept sketch. We're going to look at some plans and elevations, details of my design, materials and the color scheme. We're going to look at the grid that influenced the plan and then some precedent studies. All right, let's get into it. So this plan is split up into four sections here. There's pilasters at each section end, and this entire wall is full of French doors to let the most light in. There's a bar area here to the right, a pool right in the middle, and then a sitting area to the left. And the entire floor is gonna be this diamond pattern Harlequin tile, and we're gonna go over the history and some precedent examples in a little bit. Okay, so here's a cleaned up version of the floor plan rendered. The bar area is here to the right. We have French doors all along this wall to let the most light in. We have a pool right in the center. We have pilasters separating these four sections. We have the Harlequin tile throughout. And if we take a look at the interior elevations, this is what the wall of the French doors look like. And the other wall here will have a projection screen for movies. And then to the right will be a wine rack with glass that separates the wine from the outside. And this is the third elevation looking down the long ways of this entire room. Okay, so taking a look at the interior 3D rendering, we can see the ceiling here is a groin vault ceiling. And we're gonna go over some examples of this later. Here we have the Harlequin tile. We have the pilasters here. And it's important to note that the groin vault sort of ends at these pilasters. Without these pilasters, it sort of doesn't ground this vault and it doesn't really look correct. There's two ways to kind of do this. You can do it with corbels or pilasters. In this case, I chose pilasters. And then this entire room, the walls and the ceiling are gonna be a custom textured wall. So sort of like a concrete looking, but lighter. And then we have transoms above these doors. We have precast surrounding the French door and the pool. And then we have the actual French door here. So looking at the main elements of this design, we have the groin vault, French doors, the Harlequin tile, and the pool. These are the main features that come together to create this space. And I know the groin vault doesn't sound like something that would be beautiful, but it actually is. So. For the materials and the color scheme, we have the custom textured surface for the walls and the ceiling, the Harlequin tile throughout, and then we have a white marble countertop for the bar area. So taking a look at the floor plan again, we can see that it's sectioned into these four quadrants. And this grid will actually help us understand the groin vault ceiling and how it's constructed. So an easy way to think about a groin vault is the main arc goes all the way throughout and then there's these secondary arcs that cut through the cross section of that main arc. So here's some examples of a groin vault ceiling in uh, M. Boys, France and I actually got to see this chateau firsthand. It's really, really cool. Like these ceilings are insane. And then we have the Harlequin tile here. Now this has been around since 17th century England. Uh, they used to use it in very grand estates or religious buildings because it was so expensive. And it's usually rendered in marble so that's why it has such a high expense. There's two ways to lay this tile throughout the space. You can have this diamond appearance or you can have a checkerboard appearance. I personally like the diamond appearance in more longer spaces because it kind of gives you these perspective lines going to the end point, and I really like that. And Ohika Castle here is where I got my main inspiration to make this room. I feel like the way this room captures the light and the actual proportions of the room are very well done. And they obviously incorporated the groin vault ceiling here too. And they have the Harlequin tile as well. And if you don't know anything about Ohika Castle, it's actually in Huntington, New York. And a man named Otto Herman Kahn built this. And Ohika is actually derived from his name. So this is Otto Kahn right in the middle, and he built this house in 1917. And they enjoyed it for a while, but then he passed away, and it fell into disrepair. And that's when this guy Gary Melius came in and purchased the property, and he actually renovated it to its former glory. You can see it here. So yeah, that's the end of the video. I hope you guys liked it, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.